Hello, and welcome to Northern Building Plastics Roofline Installation Guide. Use a crowbar to remove all old rotten trusses attached to the rafter ends. If any nails are still connected, pull them out with a claw hammer. Make sure to slide at least the first row of tiles back and remove all wood and corroded felt from on top of the rafter ends. Depending on how much of the membrane has decayed, however, you may have to slide multiple rows of tiles back. Roll out and measure the required amount of breather membrane. Push it up into the cavity between the tiles and timber and secure in place using clout nails. Cut off the excess felt with a utility knife. Build up the spars by screwing new trusses into position, at first to the rafter at either end, to which you can attach a string line in order to ensure they are all level. Then proceed to fit the rest of the trusses along the line. In this instance, the fitters are using 16mm UPVC flat fascia board to replace the trusses with. Slide into place and attach 9mm solid PVCU soffit boards to the underside of the spars using polytop pins. All boards should be fixed at a maximum of 600mm centres. Use soffit joint trims to neatly join boards together. Wipe away any dirt with a multi-purpose wipe. We recommend preparing fascia boards by fitting them with an over fascia vent to allow ventilation inside the rafters. Hold the fascia level up against the rafter feet and hammer polytop nails into the face of the board, partially at first, in order for you to be able to remove the protective film, after which they can be driven fully home. Use a joint to join two lengths of fascia together 
by applying Fixco high viscosity superglue to it before spraying activator to the relevant area and pressing the joint into the gap. Ensure to seal gaps between the masonry and soffit as well as on the edges of corners and joints in order to prevent bugs and insects getting inside. Slide eaves guard vent trays underneath the roofing felt and then secure to the top of the fascia with wood screws at 300mm intervals. Overlap trays by about 150mm and then ensure to screw through both trays. Cut back excess roof felt where necessary so it doesn't encroach on the lip of the eaves guard as any water which gets under the tiles needs to be able to run back down the tray and into the gutter. When all trays have been fitted, slide the tiles back into position so that only the very end of the eaves guard lip is protruding from underneath them. Mark out the position of every support point along the line of guttering. Fix a bracket at either end of the gutter and use a string line to make sure your gutter is straight, whether level or laid to a fall. Screw the brackets to the fascia along the line created at maximum intervals of 800 millimeters. A fascia bracket should be fitted within 150 millimeters of all stop ends and angles. Starting at the gutter outlet, insert the back edge of the gutter under the retaining lip of the fascia brackets, then press down to snap the front of the gutter into place. The fitting of a union bracket is required at each junction of two gutter sections. For the end of the gutter, cut out a small section, attach a stop end to prevent water escaping and clip it into place. Fix the gutter outlet to the fascia vertically above the gully from which the rainwater will be conveyed to the drainage system. Fixing of the downpipe starts at the gutter outlet. An offset is generally required to join the gutter outlet to the downpipe on the wall. Offsets can be constructed from a range of bends depending on the roof overhang and should be supported directly beneath the lower offset bend by a pipe clip. Insert a length of downpipe into the bottom of the offset bend and fix a pipe clip to the wall. Ensure that a gap of 10mm is left at the top of the downpipe for thermal expansion. Strip off all the old barge board and box end materials. Fit soffit board to the underside of the gable with pins at regular intervals. Measure and cut fascia to form the return to gable wall. Like in this case you may have to cut out a segment of the board which is resting against the wall in order to accommodate the brickwork. Measure and cut double ended fascia board to form the main part of the box end and use as few visible fixings as possible in fastening it to the side of the fascia. The corners are measured and cut to size. The back 
corner is notched to allow for the gable ladder. Use superglue and activator to bond the corner in place. Cut the barge board to suit the installation before fitting it into place and nailing it up at regular intervals, no more than 600 millimeters. In this instance, we're using universal dry verge, which means separate left and right-handed units aren't required. Slide the dry verge along the tile towards the apex until the verge unit butts against the end of the tile. Do the same with the next unit so that it overlaps the top part of the unit underneath. Drill concrete screws through the fixing holes to firmly hold the dry verge in place. The verge units are designed to interlock while still allowing ventilation inside them. When you get to the ridge, carefully place the ridge cap over the end of the ridge tile, simultaneously sealing the ends of the dry verge. Ensure the flexible flaps contour around the sides of the verge system, effectively creating a tight seal to prevent water ingress. You can contact us by calling our Leeds branch on 0113 277 8600 or our Bolton branch on 0120-480-0565. You can visit our website www.nbpltd.co.uk, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram.